What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I need to ask you guys a question. It's a very simple question. Would you spend $3,000 on a Keyforge deck? Because that is a question that is being asked to the community at the moment. And evidently, the answer is yes. Now, this isn't just any Keyforge deck. So, we did have a deck that went and won over in Denver. It was Bahamut, Alplarissa, Hyfetz. And it did win the Denver Volt Tour. And it is an incredibly good deck. It is currently sitting with an SAS score of 97, which makes it among the very best decks in all of Keyforge. It is a phenomenal deck. And it is currently up for sale. It is being advertised over on Facebook. And the person selling it basically said, I listed it for $5,000. And I said that if I got an offer in the range of $3,000, I would auction it. And he did. So he is with a $3,000 starting bid and $100 increments. So the crazy thing is that $3,000 might not get you this deck. It is just the starting price of the deck. If you want it, well, you better go pay $3,000 and hope you don't get outbid. Cool. So, is it worth it? And we'll take a look at the deck in a moment. But the first thing you need to think about is... And again, this isn't the only thing to worry about. We'll get, to, we'll get to all the points. But one of the first things we need to mention here is, is it worth it? Monetarily speaking. So if you win the Volt Tour, you get yourself 500 Amber Shards. And that can be spent on a bunch of stuff, mats and shirts and bags and all of that realistically, you'll probably get a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff from that. I'm not going to sit here going through all the permutations and trying to work out the value and all of that. Let's just put it at somewhere in the region of a couple hundred dollars. It could be more or less. And you also get, for winning a Volt Tour, you get free entry and travel to another Volt Tour. Now, I've been hearing that this is somewhere in the region of an $800 limit. Which means that if you go to a Vault Tour with this deck or any deck and win, your expected return is somewhere in the region of $1,000. But remember, it's not just the 3000 for the deck. You've also got your travel accommodation to the first Vault Tour where you take this deck to try and win. So we're probably somewhere in the region of spending $3,500 with an expected return of, of $1,000. But there's no rule that you can only take this two and win one Volt Tour. Now, if it's a sealed Volt Tour, you can't take it. But any Archon Volt Tour, essentially from here until the end of the game, which will hopefully be many, many years down the line, you can take this along and go ahead and win. And then the amount you're winning just increases and increases and increases. So you're never going to make your money back from one Volt Tour. But maybe if you end up going to 10 Volt Tours and winning them all, then all of a sudden you've spent three grand, plus a little bit extra on travel, etc. And you're walking away with 10 grand worth of stuff. That's pretty sweet. Of course, what you're winning at Vault Tours is swag and travel to a new Vault Tour. You're not earning money per se. But of course, it's not just all about Vault Tours. This is a Power 8 deck, which is going to give you access to other tournaments in the future. We've not been given information about tournaments that need certain power levels, but... At some point, we've been told there will be tournaments where decks have to be certain power levels to enter. So you automatically, and it is the deck, not the player, so you will automatically get access to those tournaments if you buy a deck like this. And that, for me, is one of the biggest selling points, quite literally, 
is that this will buy you entry into tournaments that you might not have a deck that's good enough to get into. Of course, side note here, just because you've got a really good deck does not mean you're going to go and win the tournament. You need to be a very good player as well. Just putting that one out there. And of course, it all goes up to the World Championships, which is going to be for the first time next year. There's no Worlds this year. They're letting it they're letting it bet in for a year before they do that. And it might be that this deck is good enough to win the World Championships. And if it is good enough to win the World Championships, I think there's a lot of people that would pay free grand for that. At the end of the day, the message from me is very simple. I ain't ever going to pay free grand for a Keyforge deck. Because I have a wife and a one-year-old child, and my wife is pregnant with child number two. I don't have a $3,000 budget for a Keyforge deck. But if you love playing Keyforge and you want to get really good decks and you can afford it, why not? I know plenty of people that have spent that much or more on single Pokemon cards. Like, for instance, the number one trainer cards, which you get for winning the World Championships. But not everyone can win the World Championships. So some people go and buy the cards. And they'll go for more than three grand. So that's fine. So let's have a quick look at the deck. Is this a good deck? And it is a good deck. Like I say, it's got a SAS score of 97. And now I have done a video about this deck. I'll pop a link in the description. But I'm not going to make you go and watch that just to get an overview of the deck. The highlights are as such. Over in Disc, we've got three copies of Control the Week, which let you decide which house your opponent has to choose next turn. Three copies is crazy. Two copies of Ember Imp that reduce your opponent to only being able to play two cards during their turn. That's pretty gosh darned awesome. Plus, I love that it's got Overlord Grecking. When you destroy a creature, it comes into play under your control. Shadows has lots of good stealing. It's got bait and switch. They so remember the errata. It can only steal two now. There's two copies of routine job. The first gets you one stealing. The second steals two amber. I've seen decks with more than two. More than two is, is, is better than two. And then there's, say, three copies of Relentless Whispers. Deal two damage to a creature. If it destroys that creature then you get to steal an amber. So there is a fair amount of stealing. And then over in Logos. Now, the Logos isn't quite as good. There's no library access here. There is one copy of Phase Shift that lets you play a card from a different house. And there is Wild Wormhole that gives you an amber bonus and then lets you play the top card of your deck. Really, the money cards in terms of logos are Time Traveler and Library Access, and we don't see either of them here. Now, there are a couple of Dexter that, when played, capture Amber, and that's good for stopping your opponent forging. There's a couple copies of Rocket Boots, which is an upgrade, and when you fight or reap, if it's the first time the creature was used this turn, you ready it, which gives you a little bit of, I suppose we'd call it creature cheat, whereby you get to use creatures more than you normally would. So it's a very good deck. Oh, and there's also a Neurosiphon. If your opponent has more amber than you steal one and draw a card, that's really nice to have. It's good. Is it phenomenal? Yes. Absolutely. This is one of the best Keyforge decks we've seen. It's why it won a Volt Tour. Is it perfect or unbeatable? No. It has some answers to artifacts, but no amazing ones. There's one copy of Tentacus that means your opponent must pay you an amber to use a, an upgrade. But they can still use the upgrade, and it's a five-power creature that doesn't have elusive. You'll be able to take it out. And then there's Nexus, who can use an opponent's artifact as if it were yours. Free power does have elusive, but it's only free power. I've seen a lot of games with Nexus, and the decks that really need their artifacts can generally take Nexus out. Because remember, creatures come into play exhausted. Which can be a bit of an issue. If you can catch your opponent with an Appent Seed out and use it so it sacrifices and you get it brilliant. But that is not always going to happen. So I'm not loving the amount of artifact control we've got here. And similarly, the one thing I think this deck really is missing is the emergency stop your opponent forging card. Things like too much to protect. Which... 
stops, well, it steals all but six of your opponent's amber. If you can steal one more, they're not forging a key. Or things like Doorstep to Heaven that reduces both players down to five amber. Or Effervescent Principle that gets rid of half of each player's amber rounding down. That's what I mean when I say emergency stop forging cards. Those cards whereby it doesn't really matter what your opponent has. You are going to be able to stop them forging a key next turn. And I think that's the big thing missing in this deck. Though I do... I do worry slightly about the artifact control. And that's not to be mean on the deck or down on the deck, let's be clear. It is very, very good as a deck. Very, very good as a deck. But we weren't asking whether it's good. If the question was, is it a good deck, it would have been a very quick video. Yes. The question I asked at the beginning of the video, is it worth $3,000? Would you ever pay $3,000 for a Keyforge deck? And the answer is, if you love Keyforge and you can afford it, it's a great deck. I, I am unconvinced how many people will be willing to. I will, of course, be watching with great interest to see whether this sells, and if so, for how much. Hopefully, the seller lets us know. I will pop a link to the sale in the description if it's still going on. So if you want to go and get it, you can. Although, to be clear, this is in no way, shape, or form intended as an advert for the deck. This is a video discussing whether you would pay $3,000 for a Keyforge deck. That seems like quite a lot. But I'd like to know your opinion, so let me know in the comments section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Keyforge and any other games that take my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.